Hello, Booktube. Hi, Booktube. Um, we're going to do something we haven't done in a very, very long time. We're going to do a tag. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually stopped doing this for a few months before because every time... My glasses are terrible. But e every time we would... Um, every time we would uh, get ready to do one, something would happen and we were never able to do it. So we just stopped doing tags for a while, even before we took our break. So, uh, and if you hear anything, that's Albert. He's making a noise over there. Oh, so we're going to do a tag, and this tag is the favorite people tag. And it was created by, I think that's it. I think that's what it's called. Favorite people tag. And it was created by Gareth at Book Songs and Other Magic. Um, we weren't tagged in this one, but he said if you want to do it, just do it. So that's what we're going to do. Because he doesn't like us. Yeah, probably. It's totally I don't like think us. anybody really likes we're us. We're weirdos. Yeah, I we're know. strange, yeah. People don't like as much anymore, but that that's okay. We we're, did it. Yeah, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, we fight ourselves. Yeah, uh, like we do to a lot of things. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how we got, got on BookTube. That's how we started on uh, March Mystery Madness. So maybe if we just do this tag, people will start tagging us again. Alan did tag us in a tag a couple months ago that we didn't get to do. Um Maybe we can still do it later on, uh, but we're going to start trying to do to do tags again. So if anybody wants to tag us, we will do our best to do it. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is a cool tag, and it's about who are your favorite people. You know, your favorite people in these categories. Um, not all about books, but some about books. Uh, quite a bit about uh, music. Your favorite things about you know, movies. Yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I love this, and I, and I love talking about myself. So it's it, it, <laughs> number one. It's my it's, favorite topic of discussion. Yeah, number one, it's easy to do. Uh, you know, and it doesn't take all that much. Um, uh, Albert. All that much thinking for this. I mean, only one question really took me a whole lot of thinking. Uh, but but I'll, I'll I'll tell you what that was when we get there. Okay. So do you want to start with yours? Uh, sure. So she'll do her first one, then I'll do my first one, and uh, there are eight of these, and then we'll be tagging a couple people at the very end. I shouldn't start the first one. I was very ambiguous about this one. The first one is your favorite actor. No, no, no. Uh, or favorite, favorite author. Author. And, yeah, I can't read my own writing. And I, it's for me, it it fluctuates. It really does, depending on mine. Really doesn't fluctuate when I'm reading much. at any time. I mean, I could say Jane Austen because I love every book I've written from her that she's written, except for one. But it's, it's she's not for me. She's not the end all be all of reading. I get more excited about other books from other authors because well, I've read them all. But yeah, it, for for me but right now. But you always come back to Jane Austen. Yeah, you I do, do always come back to, to Jane Austen. But it's it, it's it's still it, it fluctuates. My favorite author right now is uh, Regina Bell. She's a sci-fi romance author, and it's she's it's to the point for me with her books that I, I pick one up and just start reading it. I don't read the synopsis so anymore. I, how do you spell her name in case anybody wants to go look for her? Um, it's I'm pretty sure I've got this right. R e g i n e. And her last name is Abel, A B E L. And or is it, Ab is it with two L's? No. Is it just one or one L? L? Okay. Yeah. Want to um, make sure. She's a wonderful author. She uh, she's she's got this this world building ability that is just second to none, and she focuses really really hard on cultures, and I love that in a sci fi book. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, for it's Regina Bell for me right now. Cool. Yeah. I know you do talk a lot about her. Have you read everything she's put out? Not everything. But but most of it. Because I'm terrible. But most of it. Yeah, she's got this one series. It's like the Prime Mating Agency, I think it's called. That is incredible. I love that series. Boy, they don't sound good. I love it so much. Shut up. <laughs> if I ask you. All right. So I'll, I'll go with number one now. My favorite author is going to be who it has been for a very long time. Although I think over the next year or two, it very well could change. Um, and that's Arthur, Arthur C. Clarke. I love, love classic science fiction. Arthur C. Clarke writes the kind of science fiction I, I mean, he writes one of the kinds of science fiction that I really like. It's, a. Uh, some of his books are a little more science fiction light, believe it or not. I think he has the 
um, the reputation of being a hard science fiction writer. But Arthur C. Clarke is not a hard science fiction writer. His stuff is actually fairly simple. Um, his ideas are great. I love his ideas. And, and if you were to look at science fiction authors whose ideas have actually become reality, you would probably find more in Arthur C. Clarke and maybe Isaac Asimov than any other science fiction writers. <laughs> their, their, um, their technology has become reality. They are absolutely two of the most important science fiction authors ever in that um, their stuff is still aped. Things are still patterned after their writings after 70 years, 60, 70, 80 years. Well, it makes sense. So, they're, they're big on ideas. Yeah, they are. And all it takes is one good idea for somebody to grab it and run with it. That's right. Now, now you know, people talk about Star Trek and how Star Trek, um, you know, they showed all these ideas. And now, you know, the communicators look like flip phones from a few years ago and all that stuff. But all this was in science fiction books before mm -hmm. it was ever in science fiction TV shows. Well, the science so, fiction TV shows just reached a wider audience, I think. Uh, they did. Yeah, that's right. And, and mm -hmm. became much more popular at the time. So you want to go ahead with number two? But yeah, R Arthur C. Clarke is my, right now, is my favorite author. Um, closely followed by, I would say, Isaac Asimov. Okay. So, yep. Now this one was actually a little bit harder for both of us. It's number two is a comedy actor or comedian. Um, I am not a fan of comedy. That's why. I don't, I don't watch a whole lot of comedies mm -hmm. anymore. Um, so the, my, my favorite comedy actor is he's, he's a, a, an older, uh, from, from older movies. It's John Candy. I, I loved all of his movies. Oh, I didn't love them all, uh, but, I, I, liked, so but I liked a good deal of them. I mean, I... I really enjoyed John I, Candy. Like Uncle Buck, The Great Outdoors, tra Planes, Trains, Ooh, and Automobiles. The Great Outdoors. I loved The Great Outdoors. <laughs> I don't know why, but I loved it. I'm very easy to please when it comes to comedies. Yeah, I guess so. It's, yes, shut up. <laughs> Nobody asked you. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not that I hate all comedy. I don't. I like com comedy that is organic. I, like com I don't like comedy... The thing is, I want comedy to go all out and just be crazy, or I want it or just organic in the storyline. I want, uh, but I don't. I hate broad comedy. I hate Adam Sandler. Um, I hate. Uh, I I don't like Steve Martin. I don't like most of Steve Martin stuff. I like some of Steve Martin stuff. Like I love planes, trains, and automobiles, and some of his other stuff. But it's usually not because of Steve Martin that I love it. Only Murders um, in the Building is really, really good. Yeah, but it, Martin Short is the best character in the. Um, <laughs> <It is. laughs> and, uh, but yeah, mine is John Cleese. I love Monty Python. John Cleese was my favorite uh, part of Monty Python. Um, I love a fish called Wanda. Oh my God! What a, I love what a that great, movie so what a much. great movie. And he is easily the best part of that movie. He's he's easily the best part of a lot of movies that he's in, especially in my opinion. The uh, like, well, he's not easily the best part of a lot of uh, um, Monty Python. He's one of the more memorable Eric, parts. Eric Idle is oh, God. He, Eric Idle rivals. Uh, John Cleese as the funniest part of Monty Python. I, th I think Michael Palin might might be a a, a bit of a rival there as well. Who Especially, did I say? You said Eric Idle. Oh, Eric Idle and Michael Palin. Yeah. I, oh. Yeah, both of those guys. <laughs> I, I, I love them. Actually, I love the, the entire troupe, but yeah. those three guys are amazing. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, John, John Cleese, pretty easily. He is, he is a bit of a knob. We all know that. Um... As a person, you should never so, meet your heroes. Yeah, or learn about your heroes. Yeah, I guess don't, so. Don't watch biopics about your heroes. Yeah. <laughs> All um, right, your turn. Number three is a uh, dramatic or serious actor or actress. I had a real hard time with this. I did not. Um, cause I don't watch <laughs> dramas like very much at all. I. Yes, you do. Not no, not really. I like horror and I like. Some fantasy, oh, that's true. I like that's lots true. of horror, and and you even like a lot of science fiction some shows. Kids movies, I like science fiction. I'm, I'm, yep, I'm turning into a very simple person. But if we're going with a dramatic, and, yeah, I know. Science fiction, simple. 
I, I like Star Trek. It's not, it's not, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, it's, I'm, I'm not a huge, well, no, I do like sci-fi movies. Yeah, I um, do. I just don't like drama much. Um, but we're going with the older, a much older actor is uh, Peter Cushing. I, I in, in like the old, uh, Old horror films. I love Peter films Cushing. Yeah. And Amicus films. Absolutely. I love Peter Cushing. He's a he's a great great. At, well, he was a great actor. Be um, Becky not too long ago made a really good um, observation about the Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing movies. Christopher Lee makes entrances and makes these beautiful entrances that are that are just great. Peter Cushing doesn't need to do that because he's such a great actor. He plays with the scenery. That's one thing I, I, I noticed about Peter Cushing. There was a movie he was in. I can't remember what it was. What it was. I believe it, it was one of, I believe it was Frankenstein. He was, he, he was playing a doctor. It was, well. It, I know that. He, he was, he, he was either playing, Frankenstein or Horror of Dracula. It might have been Horror of Dracula. Yeah. It might have been Ben. I don't think it was Ben Helsing, the character. Okay. But anyway, I, I'm pretty sure he wasn't playing Dr. Frankenstein because he was a good guy. Um. But he was playing a doctor, and there's he's sitting there just giving somebody a trans a transfusion. It is, you know, at the it time. Is, is it yeah. okay? You know, at the time the transfusions where you had to hook somebody up to a tube and hook another person up to a tube and then just blow into it or something. But anyway, he's picking things up. He's folding things up to put them away. He's um, sterilizing things. He's putting things in order, and it's just marvelous to watch. It is. Because he's not standing there delivering these dramatic lines like Christopher Lee loved to do and was wonderful at doing. Yeah. But yeah, Christo uh, but Peter Cushing grabs on grabs onto the scenery and he makes the most of it and he uses it to further his character and I love that about him. I do too. Love it. Yeah. He out of the two, I think actually Peter Cushing is more in indispensable. Yeah. So. I had no idea what that was. Okay, so now it's your turn for the fourth one. No, it's your which, turn. You didn't do the dramatic actor. Oh, I didn't do actor. the dramatic actor. Oh, We okay. got carried away with Peter Cushing. Yeah, we did. Dramatic or serious actor or actress is is what number three is. And mine is Toshiro Mifune. Yes. Um, Japanese actor, mostly known for his Akira Kurosawa films. Um, As he would be. Yeah. I mean, amazing in, like, Rashima. Amazing in... Um, Albert, what did you uh, Yojimbo. Uh, what what does Albert have? I don't know. Okay, uh, but Becky's gonna have to go check on Albert. <laughs> but Toshiro Mifune, if you don't know who he is, look him up. You may have seen him. You've probably seen him on like a DVD and Blu-ray covers, if nothing else. Um, but he's amazing. He's he does chew up the scenery. Let's give him that. He is the opposite of Peter Cushing. Um, he is closer. He'd be closer to Christopher He's Lee. He's the Japanese Christopher Lee. Yeah, and <sighs> say hi, Albie. Hi, Albie. <laughs> hi. So, um, <laughs> but he play, he played these parts perfectly. Now, Ra Rashomon is actually not one of my favorite favorite movies of his. I think he actually uh, chews up the scenery a little, a little overly much in it. Not, not that I hate the movie. I think it's a great movie, and I think but it's I a very, it. very important movie. <laughs> <laughs> and here's little Link. But, um, yeah, Toshiro Mifune, my favorite dramatic actor, hasn't acted in a long time. Although he did do a really cool film with um, Charles Bronson. What was it called? Death in... I don't know. I cannot remember what it's called. But but look, look it up. Toshiro Mifune, Charles Bronson. Um, really, really a cool movie. So Albert. Your turn for number... Four. Four? Yep. Favorite political figure? I absolutely do not have one. To totally understandable. Not not even sort of kind of remotely do I have a favorite, a favorite political figure. Yep. My favorite political figure is going to be... Uh, I got a weird mustache here there that's just... <laughs> it's driving you insane. It's driving me insane. <laughs> it's ugly. Um... Uh, my uh, my favorite political figure is completely controversial. Um, he has his detractors. He has people that love him. He has more detractors than people that love him. And if you want to know more about me, look him up. Uh, Eugene Debs. Mm. Uh, he was a 1920s politician. 
I won't say a whole lot about him. Just look him up if you want to learn more more about me and my political leanings. So, yeah. I, I don't really have political leanings. I just sort of... You, do, you do have political leanings. You just don't, don't um, sit and dwell on politics all the time like a whole yeah. lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. I have my beliefs. I vote and... Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a favorite. All right, number f uh, five. Favorite film writer or director? This one was easy for me. It's Guillermo del Toro. Very easy for me, too. Yeah. I love his movies. Yeah, I do, too. I even like the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like, what was that? Don't Be Afraid of the Dark? Boy, that was bad. I actually like that movie. It's Man, I didn't. We all know I like bad horror movies. But um, the devil, the devil's backbone, the oh, Pan's devil's labyrinth, backbone was awesome. The so orphanage. <gasps> yeah, he actually didn't direct or write the orphanage. Really, he what he had to he do? He produced with it? it, I do believe. Oh, yeah. Well, that that, that upsets me. It's still good. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a, a diehard Guillermo del Toro fan. Albert, I won't let okay. him out. All right. He's My favorite uh, film writer or director is surprise, surprise, Akira Kurosawa. Um, Man, and do I have a favorite film by Akira Kurosawa? Possibly Ron. Throne of Blood? Throne of Blood is I mean, right up there. Yes, you can't yeah. go wrong with Throne, Throne of Blood. Throne of Blood is a movie. If you haven't seen it and you are a fan of uh, Shakespeare's Macbeth, please watch it. Um, Throne of Blood is really good. It's amazing. It is a beautifully shot film. Now, it's not, you know, it's not as big as Kagemusha or Ron or... Um, Will be another huge one. Hidden Fortress, Seven Samurai. You mm, know, yeah. it, it's it's about the same scope as Yojimbo. Maybe, maybe a little, no, I'd say it's bigger than Yojimbo, but uh, but they're all just beautiful movies. Akira Kurosawa, uh, he wrote or his best movies. God, you can't put put him in an era and say that his best movies are here, here or here because Ron, I believe, was seventies. Um, Kagemusha was 80s. Um, I don't know if I'm even saying that right. Oh. Kagemusha. But uh, Macbeth, uh, Macbeth, Throne of Blood, <laughs> I believe, was late 50s or early 60s. Um, and these are just some of the best films ever made. Well, he's easily one of the most consistent author, authors. Uh, directors, directors I've ever seen. Absolutely. Easily. I mean, I, I haven't seen a, anything bad that he's done. I haven't seen anything that I can even... And I've seen probably ten of his movies. And I... There's no... Oh, it, Ikiru is one of them. That is... It has nothing to do with samurai or anything like that. But is most definitely... Um, uh, it's more slice of life. But it is extremely sad. But so well, so well done. So yeah, Akira Kurosawa. That that was a very easy one for me. Yeah, uh, number six favorite new discovery. I think you might have meant like your favorite discovery of, of music or author or something, well, but not I have a, I have Did a different. You no, know, your favorite new life it. discovery. My favorite new discovery is miniature building blocks. <laughs> there, it, Lego's doing it now. They're little tiny building blocks like Legos. Um, I I get the off brand ones because they're like four hundred dollars cheaper, out off of literally like, t uh, t t Timu, uh, Timu, Timu, Timu. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> I love them so much. I've always loved Legos, um, but these they make little little sculptures, like uh, beautiful trees with flower blossoms, and uh, uh, I've got one that's a uh, gazebo. Uh, yeah, I got one that's a gazebo and one that's a greenhouse, and I love them. So much. Yeah, one that's a Christmas I, tree. I can one. sit and I can sit and do them forever. It's because they they come they come with um, diagrams and teach you how to do it, and some of them light up. And I oh, well, it's like it. it's like putting a model kit together. It is. Yeah, it's, it's it, very it, much yeah, like that. It is closer to that than it is Lego building. Yeah, I would say much much mm -hmm. closer to model building, mm -hmm. even though there's no glue or anything like that. I love it so much. I love them. They are cool. My favorite new discovery is actually. Not a completely new discovery for me, but something that I've that I just started getting into pretty heavily in the last year, and that's manga or manga, as a lot of people on BookTube say. But but yeah, it's it's manga. It's a uh, you know J Japanese comics, Japanese comic books, black and white, ninety eight percent of the time. 
Um, I love them. And I I don't buy a lot of them because they are so expensive to get into. Um, like, you'll, you'll get the first few chapters for... I think it'll be $12 to $15 for a book of manga, unless I buy them used. Um, but I, I, I read them digitally mostly. I've gotten into One Piece. I've gotten into Spiral. Um, I've gotten into Haikyuu and three or four other ones. And, yeah, they're not even really YA. A lot of them are YA, but quite a few of them are just more like made for kids. But there's some amazing science fiction ones, too. That I just love. I, I, I'm really enjoying manga a lot. Um, if I get into a slump and I, and I just can't find anything I want to read, I can always get into a comic book or a manga. So, yeah, I love it. Um, okay, number seven. Favorite musician or singer? This one was actually really, really easy for me, too. Um, this has me been, too. She's been <laughs> consistently my favorite uh, musician for what, 25, 30 years. I don't yeah. Know. Well, since I've known you and and, and before, be, it have to be a, when I was about seventeen or eighteen years old. I remember the first time I heard her, I was walking through Helen in North Georgia, and I was by myself, so I had to have been uh, seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. Um, uh, Lorena McKinnett. She is a New Age Celtic folk singer. But and, but but she's from Canada. But she's from Canada. Um. She uh she she became really really famous I think in the late nineties, um when her her song the Mummers Dance became really popular on on yep. just na on the national radio. It's about the same time like the Orinoco flow from Enya. I heard that song really a long time before well, I met you. Mm -hmm. the Mummers Dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she's consistently been my favorite singer for years and years and years and years. And it's it's because she's consistently good. Her her albums. Just as they come out, they're, they're all wonderfully done. And she has this, this beautiful, beautiful voice. But yeah, that, that one was quite easy for yeah, me. Yeah, we actually saw her in concert in At the Atlanta Fox one Theater. time. Yeah, she was yeah. wonderful. The fabulous Fox Theater. She yeah. plays so many instruments. Mm -hmm. Just in that one show, I remember. She played mm -hmm. the piano, the violin, the, the accordion. Yeah. Yeah, ah. she's a master at those three instruments, I do mm -hmm. believe. Yep. Um... Mine is the other side of the coin. Mine is the, you do 180 <laughs> degrees and uh, to get my favorite musician, singer. I'm a, I'm a metalhead. And I think just about any, anybody who knows me well knows that. I, uh, we actually run a Facebook page now that is about heavy metal, or I do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, King Diamond is my favorite. He is, he is my favorite musician, singer. He's actually, he doesn't play any instruments at all, as far as I know. Um, he is a falsetto heavy metal singer, but the man has like a dozen different voices. Is he black metal? He can sing it. No. Well, he was originally called like early, early precursor to black metal. But when, but when you put him up against Mayhem or one of these big black metal bands, they sound absolutely nothing alike. Oh, that's when you put them up against him. Yeah. That, well, yeah, but... I mean, black metal is its own thing now. I would just say he is more uh, traditional heavy metal. Heavy metal? Even, even mm -hmm. satanic metal uh, is, a, is a good name for it. What's the name of the metal Facebook page? I can't remember. Uh, my metal Facebook page? Okay. The, the Metal Consortium. Yeah. So if, That's if you're a metal head. Come, yeah, come if on you're a metal head, see us. Yeah, um, uh, I, I will have to let you in because we are private. But yeah, the, me the Metal Consortium, if you wanted to come come uh, to my new Facebook page. But yeah, King Diamond is amazing. He was with a band called uh, Merciful Fate. He actually still is. He's, I think he may be finished touring with them right now. But he's in his 60s now, and the man has not lost that much of his awesome. voice. Yeah. yeah. He has this <clears throat> voice like you, like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's completely different than he, anybody else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, so the last one is number eight, the biggest inspirational person. You know, I thought I'd have trouble with this one. I was I, I thinking I don't really have anybody who really inspires. Well, me if all it hadn't been much, this but, guy, I would have said Jim Henson. But yeah, I, it was mm -hmm. it, it was between Jim Henson and um, Mister Rogers, and for me, it's Mister Rogers. I I like to tell people that one of my my greatest goals in life is is to be the kind of person Mister Rogers knew I could be. Um. 
So, yeah, it's Mr. Rogers, I think he was a wonderful, inspirational person. In fact, he basically single-handedly saved P PBS. Uh, well, him and, and my my inspirational person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, I yeah, that, I think that's a, a, a good, a good... Uh, role model for anyone is Mr. Rogers. I loved Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Um, I remember watching Mr. Rogers, although I was a little old when when I got the chance to see him. Mm -hmm. But I had seen a couple episodes when I was really young. But a lot of people know how I was raised. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch television for a very, very lo large part of my life as a child. Um, so I, I got to a lot of this stuff late, including music. But yeah, okay, my biggest inspirational person is also somebody who almost single-handedly in his day saved uh, PBS. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Bob Ross. Um, I love watching Bob Ross's TV show. I could watch that all day long if you were to uh, set me in front of a TV and that was all I could get. I would not have a problem with that. I could sit and watch his hundreds and hundreds of episodes of him doing his hundreds and hundreds of paintings. <laughs> And I would love to own one of those things one of these days, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. He puts you in a trance-like state every time he does something. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and they're not long. Um, he, he, could, he could do stand there and do a full painting that turned out to be this really pretty landscape. It's not master level, but it didn't need to be. You know, he showed that anybody could do this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that anybody could do these kind of paintings and that they didn't need to... Um, to be masters, to be an artist, you know, or, or okay. to, a, or at the very least to, um, put something on a canvas that, you, that, that, uh, you can be proud of mm -hmm. and you can do it in a few minutes, you know? So mm. it was, it was awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. Still do. Yep. Um, even the, even the old ones. Yeah. But that's it. The last is just to tag some folks. Who are we tagging with? We're only going to tag two uh, people, because I, I don't know who's done it, but I'm pretty sure these two people have not. Mm -hmm. Number one is Steve Donahue. I'd like to mm -hmm. tag Steve. Um, and number two is M Mindy's Book Journey. We want to we want to tag Mindy. Um, there are two, two booktubers who we love to watch. Mm -hmm. um, we don't miss Mindy. We... we I can't say I watch every Steve Donahue video, because <laughs> Steve has... Since we started on BookTube, Steve has probably done 2,000 videos. Uh, maybe so more. So I watch our Steve. Maybe, maybe more. But but we watch as many as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And uh, we love those two channels, and we want to tag them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this 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 was a lot of fun to put together. Um, we, and like I said, we have fun talking about ourselves. Makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's my favorite topic of discussion. Yeah. So that's it. Um, and if anybody else wants to do this tag, please do it. We, we would love to see mm -hmm. it. Um, and also, let us know that you did it. Because because I want to watch as many people as I can do this tag. Mm -hmm. It's a fun tag. It's really fun to watch. It is. But anyway, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah, it took a little longer than I thought it would. <laughs> Again, our favorite topic of discussion. Yeah. Well, we'll we will see you soon. On. We'll see you soon, BookTube. Your books are calling... Go read. <laughs>